Hello everyone and welcome! In this video I'm going to be testing a short RAM air intake on my 1999 Acura Integra GS. Now if you haven't already watched my video on before and after removing weight from my Integra and then doing acceleration testing, you may want to check that out first as I go into detail of how I run these tests and how I determine whether or not there's an improvement. So let's discuss what we're going to be looking at. We're going to have a stock run, a run with the short RAM air intake, and then we're going to check out the percent difference between those two runs. And so I've got multiple different tests that we're going to be checking out. Uh, the first of which are the two common ones that I do, 20 to 40 miles per hour in second gear, and then 20 to 40 miles per hour in third gear. The 20 to 40 in second tests your mid to high RPM range, your 20 to 40 in third tests your low RPM range. So let's go ahead and look at our 20 to 40 run in second gear with the stock and then with the short ram air intake. So our average run for stock was 2.87 seconds, our average run for the short ram was 2.88 seconds. These numbers are rounded here, but I didn't use rounding uh, in my percent difference. And our rounding in the percent difference comes to 0.39 uh, negative. So there's actually the short ram air intake was slightly slower, but this isn't really a big difference. So we're talking pretty much the same thing before and after installing the short ram air intake. So let's take a look at the third gear run from 20 to 40 miles per hour. So the stock run averaging 4.43 seconds, the short RAM 4.41, and this gives us a percent difference of 0.63, so the short RAM was slightly faster in the low RPM range, uh, but once again these are very close numbers, um, so there's not really a significant difference there. Another thing I should note, uh, the temperature difference between these two runs uh, for stock was 17.2 degrees C, for the short RAM is 17.8, so basically I ran the test installed the short ram air intake as fast as I could and then went out and ran it again. So uh, the temperature didn't change too much. Humidity went from 56 down to 52. So there shouldn't be too much influence from temperature and humidity on this test. So I wasn't really satisfied with seeing that there was no significant difference of the short ram air intake at all, whether it was from 20 to 40 uh, in second gear or in third gear. So what I went ahead and did is I did a second gear run from 2000 RPM to 6000 RPM and then I broke that up into 1000 RPM intervals to look at across each small rev range did anything happen to the power band, was there more power at certain parts of that RPM rev range. So let's go ahead and check out the video for that. So here's where we have some interesting results that we can break down by RPM range. So for the low RPM range, stock 1.33 versus short RAM 1.32, the percent difference 0.63% faster with the short RAM in the 2K to 3K rev range. Our mid rev range, however, uh, was much slower, 3% slower uh, with the short RAM than with the stock air intake. And then going into our high RPM range, this is where the advantage of the short RAM kind of shine through. So from 4K to 5K, an advantage of 2.42% faster. In the highest RPM range from 5K to 6K, actually a 3.32% uh, faster. So the short RAM is improving the high end of 
the rev range as far as uh, the amount of power you're producing. Now, one thing I will say, which I found interesting with the data, is if you look at the third run from 2,000 RPM to 6,000 RPM versus the first run from 2,000 RPM to 6,000 RPM, it was 1.5% slower. And I think one of the reasons for this is probably the fact that that engine is getting pretty hot after these high rev range runs, and that heat is directly feeding back into the system. So, now I don't know uh, long term, you know, if you're, if you're on a track and you're just continually hammering on the throttle, if this is going to keep dipping down. But what we do know is that, you know, from a normal circumstance where you're not hammering on it all constantly, you're going to have more power at the high rev range, and you're going to lose power in the mid rev range and then the low end is pretty much going to be unaffected. So let's talk about some conclusions. When should you use a short ram air intake if you so choose to? Well, for drag cars it makes a lot of sense because you're going to keep your rev range into high RPMs, uh, it's going to be one short run, and then you're done with it. For track cars, I also think it's going to make a lot of sense because you're going to be staying in a high RPM range rather than you using those lower RPM ranges. Now, you may have heat eventually build up within that engine bay, and that may deteriorate the performance somewhat. But I think due to how high these percentages are, you know, 2 and 3% is somewhat significant for only changing uh, just one small component such as the air intake. So I think it's probably going to be worth it in the long run even if you do have a little bit of additional heat if you stay within the high RPM range. Now, what is this uh, short ram air intake not good for? And I think the perfect thing uh, that you would not want to install it in would be your daily driver. You know, you're going to be using your low RPM range way more than you're using your high RPM range when you're just driving around the city, uh, especially your mid-range area, you know, when you want a little more power when you're getting onto a freeway, you're going to use that mid-range and you're going to be losing power in that situation. So if it's for a daily driver, I'd recommend against using a short ram. If it's purely a track car, it could be a significant benefit. Any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.